Hi! Aviation has come a long way since 1903 when the Wright Brothers Flyer 1 aircraft first took to the skies. Flying machines have set incredible records one after the other. The first flight stayed up for just 12 seconds and flew 120 feet, but this was a true revolution. Today's aircrafts have by far higher performance. For example, the Bombardier Global 7500 has a range of 7,700 nautical miles, while the Lockheed SR-71A can reach speeds of 2,193 miles per hour. But we have an aviation record holder. It has broken about 240 staggering world records. This Air Titan doesn't take off, rather it pushes the ground away. It's not an airplane, but the dream. Whenever the flying giant AN-225 wants to take off or land, a large crowd of spectators gather to capture this stunning event. Eyewitnesses enthusiastically share their emotions from their encounter with such a whopper. You bet! This true monster of the skies has a staggering 290-foot wingspan. It is 275.6 feet long and stands 63.7 feet high. That's nearly the size of a standard football field, which measures 360 by 160 feet. The famous flower carpet at the Grand Place in Brussels measures 252 by 79 feet. Antonov AN-225 has a carrying capacity of 250 tons, with a maximum takeoff weight of 640 tons. It can reach a top speed of 528 miles per hour, a maximum flight altitude of 7,456 miles, and a cruising altitude of 5,592 miles. It has a flight range of 8,310 nautical miles with no cargo, and 2,160 miles with 200 tons of cargo. This behemoth has a takeoff distance of 1.5 miles when empty, and 2 miles with cargo. It comes off the ground at 348 miles per hour and lands at 183 miles per hour. I wonder if the famous French entertainer Michael Lotito could eat it and how long it would take him. After all, it took the Frenchman, named Mr. Eat All, two years to eat a Cessna 150 plane with tires and leather seats. Interesting fact, the cargo compartment of an AN-225 Maria is longer than the distance covered by the world's first plane. It resembles an aircraft hangar. The 152-foot pressurized cargo can easily accommodate another plane or train. This is not just any BD-5 microaircraft that measures just over 15 feet in length with a 20-foot wingspan and 463 pounds weight. We're talking about a Boeing 737. The AN-225 is powered by Progress D-18T turbofan engines, which are not small either. With a diameter of more than 6.6 .6 feet, they weigh 4.5 tons. The aircraft has six of these engines, each of them produces over 23 tons of takeoff thrust. However, due to the large weight of the AN-225 aircraft and the fact that its landing gears leave traces on the runway, many airports are reluctant to let it land on their ground. By the way, Imria has a unique seven-row main chassis, two racks with two wheels in each row. Each wheel goes for about $1,000, and there are only 32 of them. Four on two front supports and 28 on the main ones. The wheels are changed every 90 landings. Interesting fact, the last three rows of wheels are steerable so that the giant plane could make a 180 degree turn on a 200 foot wide runway. By the way, when loading and unloading its cargo, the AN-225 kneels forward to unfold the ramp, which is called an elephant's bow. This so-called bow of the elephant takes about seven minutes, and really, there is something fascinating in this action. The elephant eats a lot. It consumes 16 tons of fuel per hour when flying in cruise mode. Refueling may take up to one and a half days. This whopper doesn't just take off, but rather quickly dives into the sky. It climbs on its wing and goes into altitude. So why was such a giant aircraft created? At one time, Soviet developers were working to create the ambitious Spiral project. The idea was to create a powerful aircraft that would accelerate by six times the speed of sound with a manned orbital ship on its back. Such a raider would start with the booster at an altitude of 17 to 19 miles. Things didn't get into flight tests, but among its classmates, the Spiral project became the pilot version of the Buran spacecraft project. 
Launch vehicle Energia was designed to launch the Buran into space. The reusable aerospace system Energia Buran was the Soviets' response to the US space shuttle. At first, everything went as planned – unmanned landing, no toxic fuel, horizontal flight tests. But how do you transport various components of the launch vehicle and spacecraft from the place of production and assembly to the launch site? After all, the tanks of the rocket alone measure 26 feet in diameter. You can't imagine, but various projects were considered. Each new project was better than the previous one, and they were engulfing 10 billion rubles. While the total cost of the entire program was 16.4 billion Soviet rubles. For example, there was even a proposal to dig a canal from the Volga to Baikonur. Adventurous specialists suggest remembering the Spiral Project. That's how the idea to create a super-heavy transport jet aircraft was born. The heavy aircraft was to lift at least 250 tons. The AN-124 aircraft was used as a basis for the development. Gleb Lozino Lozinski, the chief designer at research and production enterprise NPO Molnia, considered launching the orbital ship directly from the AN-225 aircraft, but this just remained a design on the design board. By the way, there was a funny story behind the name of the aircraft. Employees would jokingly call it One and a Half Russian, or Lucy, because they thought that the high-wing aircraft would be called Ludmila. That's logical, in line with Pushkin's epic fairy tale Ruslan and Ludmila. But no, the plane's descendants are not just the names of legendary heroes, they contain the letter combination A and N, which is a brand name for all aircrafts manufactured by the Antonov Design Bureau. But Antonov's successor, Petro Balabuyev, surprised everybody when he ordered that the unusual name Mria be inscribed on the body of the AN-225 aircraft on the night before the memorable date, just a few hours before the plane was to be unveiled. However, NATO's military code name for the aircraft is Cossack. The Anton AN-225 carried the Buran on its back for a total of 28 hours and 27 minutes on 14 different flights. The first flight was on May 3, 1989. Never before had space technology tests been shown to such a wide public, let alone live. In the summer of the same year, the Soviet Union excelled at the famous Le Bourget exhibition in Paris. For the first time, apart from the civil IL-96 and two 204 aircrafts, the Soviets displayed military fighter jets Su-27 and MiG-29. But most of those present were struck by the giant AN-225 carrying a spaceship on its back. After that, the aeronautical scientific technical complex started receiving both practical and rather exotic proposals. For example, Mr. Samar Khandi, a British citizen of Pakistani origin, suggested creating a three-deck passenger airliner on the basis of the Amriya aircraft. He proposed that two decks be placed in the cargo cabin and the third one on the place of the escort's cabin. This involved creating huge cabins for businessmen and cabins for newlyweds with showers and other amenities, various salons, duty-free shops, and a casino. The proposed route was Sydney, London, Tokyo, Sydney. Oilmen planned to use AN-225 to transport a 190-ton fractioning column on an external suspension from Kubashev to the north. It normally takes two years to transport such a column. Maria could have done it in 15 days. Work began, the designer and manufacturer of the column started working towards strengthening the points on the aircraft where the column would be attached. But after several months of hard work, the customer abandoned this idea without explaining the reasons. Around the same time, the Energia Buran program was being phased out due to high cost and lack of need. Could you imagine that whenever the rocket is launched, water from the Sirdaria River is diverted to a man-made underground lake to cool a concrete pit where the produced gases, heated up to 6,332 degrees Fahrenheit, channeled? By the way, when launching the rocket, water consumption is usually higher than that consumed by all the fountains of Peterhof combined. And all the 150 fountains of Peterhof consume around 291 gallons of water every second. Well, over 2 million gallons of water drain into the Gulf of Finland every day. What a reservoir! Of course, work on the AN-225 also stopped. Imria represented the Soviet Union a couple of times at air shows in Canada and the USA. It has flown several times to the United States with humanitarian cargoes. One of such flights had an unpleasant story. The unpleasant story is, of course, to say the least. 
The plane was flying across the Atlantic Ocean when one of its extreme engines failed. Of course, fuel consumption increased. The fuel system was not fully tested, I mean, not calibrated. No one really knew how much fuel was left in the tanks. As it approached America, the crew realized that they were running out of fuel and there were not enough life jackets for everyone. Fortunately, the American Air Authorities contacted the flight dispatchers and the crew straightened the route and sat on the runway without performing the box. Naturally, the engines were stopped while taxiing. Anyway, it was a hell of a flight. After the incident, the giant was sent on an indefinite leave, so it was decommissioned and its engines were transferred to the commercial Ruslan aircrafts. But Maria was once again lucky. After a long stay on the ground, the modernized aircraft, after being certified for commercial operation, took off on May 7, 2001. In 2009, the AN-225 was again modernized and its lifespan extended to 2033. To become famous, this monster of the skies did not have to fly at 7,366 miles per hour like the NASA X-43 drone or climb to a height of 70 miles like Spaceship One. During its operation, the AN-225 has set 240 world records. In 2001, the Titan lifted a record load of 253.82 tons into the sky. In 2004, it delivered heavy construction equipment, weighing a record of 247 tons from Prague to Tashkent. In 2009, Maria carried the heaviest monocargo in the history of aviation from Frankfurt to Yerevan. It was a generator with a special transportation frame weighing 187.6 tons. Painting exhibitions have even been held aboard this giant. The exhibition, which was held in 2012 during the Aviasfit 21 air show at a height of about 6 miles, featured 500 paintings from 120 artists. The AN-225 carried the world's longest piece of air cargo as it flew two 138-feet wind turbine blades from China to Denmark in 2010. Well, what's there to say? On September 11, 2001, a crew led by Alexander Galanunenko set 214 national and 110 world records in a single flight. This legendary pilot has broken 263 world records, 234 of them while flying Maria. The AN-225 is often called the emergency ambulance in the world because many of its flights transport humanitarian cargo to all corners of the globe that have survived a natural disaster. In 2009, Maria flew to Samoa to deliver generators needed to restore a power plant damaged by the tsunami. In 2010, Maria delivered large construction equipment to Haiti in response to the earthquake. In March 2011, the air giant helped after the Great East Japan earthquake. An interesting fact, the most distant point from the base airport where the aircraft has ever visited was the Tahiti Island. The distance among the shortest arc of the globe was about 10,190 miles. The takeoff and landing of an AN-225 is a real show. Crowds of people gather at any airport to catch a view of this monster. For example, in the homeland of the Kangaroo, huge traffic jams formed on the roads leading to the airport in Perth. People even spent the night in cars to take a comfortable observation point. Have you ever seen the takeoff or landing of this Titan? Or have you ever stood near it or even entered inside? Let's hear you in the comments section. This mega aircraft has competitors, but they have not been put into operation. For example, the Hughes H-4 Hercules with a 320-foot wingspan performed its only flight at an altitude of 70 feet in 1947, and that was the end of its exploits. The Mammoth Stratolaunch Model 351, built for American aerospace company Stratolaunch Systems, is about 49 feet shorter than Umria. Its maximum takeoff weight is also 40 tons less. True, it has a wingspan of 384 feet, but even this figure was reached thanks to its two-body scheme. Moreover, the model has conducted only one test flight so far and is designed as a carrier platform for lifting missiles into the stratosphere before they're launched into space. There is a demand in the world for super-heavy and super-sized air transportation, which means that the AN-225 will still work to serve humanity. Like the video? Don't forget to like the video, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss all the interesting things.